Hello and welcome to my session on IP version 4 subnetting. My name is Melissa Halleck and I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to solve a subnetting problem when you are taking a certification exam. Just memorize these steps and before you know it, you'll be able to solve them very quickly. In our scenario here, the hosts that we need are 60 hosts, we need four subnets, and we're on a Class C network of a 192.168.1.x. The first step when you are taking this exam is to write from right to left, beginning with the number one, and then double that number until you reach 128. So on the right side, I start with the number one, and then I double it to two, double it to four, double it to eight, double it to 16, double it to 32, double that to 64, and then double that to 128. And make sure you draw a table around those numbers. Step two, create another row on top. And this is gonna be for the number of the subnets that you need. So on the left side, start with the number two and double it until you've reached the last column. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. And this is going to look just like a table in a row on top, and that's going to be your number of subnets. We need four subnets, so let's circle that number. The next thing we're going to do is create another row on bottom, and this is going to be for the number of hosts that you need. So on the right side, you're going to start with the number two and double it until you reach the last column. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. Now because this is the number of hosts you need, we are going to need 60 hosts. The closest number is 64, so let's circle that number. Now the middle row becomes what we're going to increment by. We chose number 4 for 4 subnets, and that means right underneath it we need to choose the number 64 and that's how we're going to increment our ranges. So circle the number 64. So we started out with a 192.168.1.0. Because we're going to increment by 64, let's just add underneath a dot .64. Then add 64 more, that's dot .128, plus 64 is dot .192, plus 64 is dot .256. The next step is to put in your ranges. So since we have 64 below, we could go to 63 in the zero range above. So 0 to 63, 64 to 127, 128 to 191, and 192 to 255. The last number is 256, and there's no range there, so we're going to get rid of that. The other thing that you have to remember is that when you create your first range, the first number is not routable and the last number is always a broadcast. So we have to get rid of the first and last number in each range. This makes our usable hosts .1 to .62, .65 to .126, .64 to .128, .128 to .128, and .193 to .254. And we get rid of 256 because there's no range. So without going into binary, because I have another video for that, we're looking at we have a class C. Now a standard default subnet mask is forward slash 24 because we have 255.255.255.0 in a standard subnet mask in a class C. Now, when we do change that to binary, then that looks like all ones in the first octet, all ones in the second, and all ones in the third octet. So how do we come up with our subnet mask for our new custom subnet? Well, if we look at the table above, we borrowed two bits. Each column is going to be considered a bit. So 2 is a bit and 4 is a bit. So we borrowed 2 bits. So then we do our custom subnet mask all in binary. So we have our all ones 
And then there's the two bits that we borrowed in the last octet. Once we convert that, it comes to 255.255.255.192. And last but not least, once you've completed it, make sure to check your calculations. The first host address always ends with an odd number. The last host address always ends with an even number. The last network always equals value of bits borrowed and the host value times the subnet value will always equal 256. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope it really helps you whenever you're taking your certification exams. Thanks everyone and take care and have a fantastic day.